Hi, Dee Dee here. Um, to, for this post, I am starting with a piece of Canson watercolor paper. This is what I really like to art journal on, and sometimes when I'm kind of experimenting or trying out techniques, it's also my go-to. I love watercolor paper because it's super sturdy, and even sometimes I'll use it uh, to back a project, like if I have done some jelly printing or something. So I was using Liquitex Professional Smooth Gesso with a Simply Simmons wash brush and I covered the entire page and then I had quite a bit of gesso left over in my brush and so I have this miniature moleskin planner that I accidentally ordered because I have way too many things to write down than would ever fit in a planner that large so um, I used the extra gesso in that and uh, maybe I'll do an artist gang post in the future working in that miniature journal which is really an entire challenge on its own because it's so tiny. So I'm almost done prepping that and maybe I'll use it in an artist gang post. Uh, you can see here the watercolor paper after everything's dried and I kind of give it a little of a bend. Uh, it flattens out and it's really great. So I love how sturdy it is and now it's covered in gesso and I'm ready to work with some of my favorite uh, acrylic mediums. I'm going to get out one of the brand new Donna, Donna Downey signature stencils from her artist series. I've got a catalyst um, spatula from Princeton. I've got some light molding paste or modeling paste. I can't remember which one Golden calls it. I'm sorry. Same thing. Um, I've got the light version here. So it's, um, kind of like, it seems a little bit more whipped. Like it's a really, it's got a really nice lightness to it. And, uh, then you'll also see to the left there, I have some Viva Las Vegas stamps. Stamps. So we'll get back to those. Real quick, though, I want to say when you're working with stencils and things like modeling paste, um, one of one of the really important like tidbits that I can give you is don't overwork the stencil. So load up your palette knife or your spatula, etc., and uh, really like work quickly and and take as few swipes as possible to get the medium through the stencil because the more you work with it then the higher the chance the stencil is going to move and or your medium is going to squeeze underneath the stencil and then you won't have that like perfect kind of image that you're going for. Then I put my paper down and I used a heat tool to dry the surface of the modeling paste and before it was dried all the way I used a rubber stamp to stamp in some texture into the buds on some of these flowers that are in the vases. And it's very stinking cool. It creates like a really awesome texture. And I use stars. Uh, if you watch any of my videos or, or you know me in person or anything like that, like I have a huge star tattoo on my arm and they've always kind of meant a lot to me. So I used stars to add texture um, to the really big round buds that come in this vase. And the smaller ones I left alone, I'll do some other stamping with. Here I am using some fluid acrylic and glazing medium to really highlight all the textures that I have going on on my page now. So between the gesso and the brush strokes and the gesso, the modeling paste itself, and then the stamping that I did into some areas of the modeling paste, I've got a lot of texture that I really want to highlight. And all that white on white was making the texture kind of recede into the background and I really didn't want that to happen. So I'm glazing and some of those recesses are really like coming forth now. They're they're darker than the other areas. And I just use a baby wipe to wipe that uh, that glaze back. And I've done it twice. Um, on, at that point, I had done it twice. I glazed twice. Now I've got another stamp. This is a dictionary stamp, and I've got some archival ink here. And I have put my stencil back down and pulled out a piece of music text. The buds that I didn't stamp into before to create texture, I'm now using a mixture of the stencil and a little piece of book text to mask off areas and stamp onto the smaller buds. So. It's very cool. Um, you can definitely mix stencils and stamps and different things like that uh, to create different looks and different textures and different feels. So that's really kind of what I was focusing on for this video. It's just showing the variety that you can get from using similar products. I very well could have also stamped the dictionary text um, into the modeling paste before it dried completely. 
Um, but yeah, so think about that. Keep things like that in mind. You know, definitely try to stretch your materials. Like just because it's a rubber stamp doesn't mean you should only stamp on cards or in black. Like, you know, kind of branch out and, and try new things. Don't be afraid. Experiment. Um, now I have put a little bit of, oh, I, okay. Um, so the gray that I used before, I liked it, but it wasn't dark enough. So now I have gone in and I have used a mixture of carbon black fluid acrylic with a little bit of titanium white fluid acrylic by Golden. There's a, a bit of airbrush medium in there, and then I added some glazing medium. And the only reason that the airbrush medium is in there is because I kind of emptied some of it out of my fine liner. I knew that the, my fine liner mixture was already darker than the gray I had used before. And then I added even a little bit more black. So it's kind of a little hodgepodge mixture. And I'll probably never be able to get it exactly the same again. But that's all right. I'm enjoying where it's going. And uh, it really helped kind of liven things up and darken things here. And now I have put some gesso on my mat on, on the... To the side on my under paper and you'll see me do this a lot this is one of my favorite techniques um, and I I have learned um, in the past you know to really trust in myself and I really love to paint with my fingers and to highlight textures with my fingers and, and the reason is because it's not like a brush so I don't push my fingers all the way down into the depths of my piece like of the textures but it's not as rigid as a palette knife would be so it's only scraping the very top it's kind of a nice in the middle between a brush and a palette knife so I'm able to really highlight some textures uh, while also getting some good coverage so that's what I'm doing here on those larger buds where I was able to stamp into before the molding paste dried all the way to create texture so I'm highlighting the surface of those and you can see uh, where the stars are kind of poking through I did miss one or two of them, and the really large bud in the top left right there, that one I didn't have thick enough when I was doing the modeling paste because it was such a large surface to, care, to cover. The modeling paste really thinned out there. You live and you learn, and actually, because I missed so many of them, there's one, two, three, plus that really big, or four, plus that really big one, it ended up having a great balance and being very nice. So a few of them have the texture from the stamp. A bunch of the small buds have the actual stamp on them and then a few of those larger ones are just going to get a little bit of color at the end. Here I am splattering um, some of the glazing stuff that's left over in my little cup and what I really like about this is that I'm heating it very quickly with the heat gun so that it starts to dry around the edge and then I'm going to use a baby wipe to pull up the wet paint that's still in the middle. So instead of just having kind of like these weird, or not weird, I really love splatters and I actually use them a lot. I shouldn't have said that. Instead of having splatters, solid splatters all over the page, now I have kind of hollow splatters and it's, it's very cool and I really like it and I'll probably utilize that technique quite frequently. Doing the same thing. I really liked it, so of course I went overboard. <laughs> and using the baby wipe really helps too, uh, and especially if you're using like fluid acrylics because they already have so much fluidity to them. Uh, when you use a baby wipe, if it smears outside of the circle, it's fairly easy to wipe up really quickly. So that's nice. Uh, I just used a Stabilo Marksall pencil. Uh, to outline my piece and I did glaze and I really like the way the glaze looks but I could tell that it just quite wasn't popping enough yet and I had already gone over in white and started my splatters and I really just didn't want to glaze again. I love the variation that I get from glazing but because I knew I wanted a super specific not even really a shadow. At first I was trying to create a shadow with like the light coming from the right and all the shadows on the left but then I thought thought to hell with it. What if I just outline the whole thing and really make it kind of pop off the page? And and it's fun and I like it. And you can see the Stabilo while it's wet is very intense, but it does mute out. It doesn't completely disappear, but it, it fades away um, quite a bit once it dries. And and so that's nice too, because it wasn't like a, like a black pen or a black post gum marker or anything like that in your face. 
it had more of a neutral kind of mid-tone to it. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just uh, trace through all the outside edges of the flowers and the vase and things like that. And then I'll use, this is a script brush. They're really long and have very few bristles to them. And they're great for whatever, like signing your canvas when you're done um, or just adding some great uh, writing to a project or doing some fine detailed work like like petals of flowers and things like that. And it's just really long and skinny. And it tends to work really well when I'm working in small spaces like this. Also, what I'm able to do with this brush, I get it wet on the end and then I lay the brush down against the page and it only gets the Stabilo wet and it kind of helps um, draw out the Stabilo in a sort of gradient towards the outside where there's a little bit less water. And you'll see me here just kind of drawing things and checking on the tones. Um, I mentioned earlier that Stabilo is really intense when it's wet and it kind of fades away a little bit uh, once it dries. And so it's easier if I do it in steps and I kind of keep an eye on exactly how much Stabilo I'm applying. Maybe some areas I didn't apply enough or if in some areas I apply too little, I can go back and do them and, and I just kind of work on it. It's like a work in progress, right? So I just work on it a little bit here and a little bit there rather than doing the whole thing and then going back and fixing areas. And that's totally a personal choice. You'll just see me dry a few, dry an area and then wet an area, dry it, and then wet the next area, dry it, and then wet the next area. Oh, and um, I turn my page all the time. And I don't know how many people do this or if you do this, if you don't, and it might help you. I, I do. I turn my page so often, um, not for any other reason than I don't want to be reaching over things. Like I don't want to be reaching across my page to get to the top when I can just turn it around. And when I was learning product rendering in college, one of the things that really helped me was if I looked at something upside down, especially because we already have these ideas in our head of a cow looks like a cow, so I should draw it like a cow. But if you were to turn that cow upside down, you're going to focus more on the shapes and the textures that are coming from the piece than the fact that you should be drawing a cow. And so if you, if you find yourself having trouble or, or you just can't get something right, um, turn it upside down. Just try it out. It, you know what? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's something that does work for me, and uh, maybe it'll work for you too. Try turning your page if you've never done that. It might stretch your creativity or it might help you hone in on, on what is what you're feeling is not going right on your page. Um, or if you still, even if you really like your page and you turn it, then maybe you'll like it even more or you'll, you know, I don't know, just turn your page. <laughs> uh, here I've got a Woody Stabilo crayon and these are fairly new to me, but I will say ever since I got them, I've used them on about three quarters of the projects I've been working on. They are a water soluble wax crayon and they'll always be water soluble. So they are, they are something that should sort of either be done at the end or not as a permanent layer. Like you'll know, you know that it's going to disappear eventually um, if you use it early on in your project. But I used it right here at the end to add some teal color to these really large blooms and I love it. And then I did go back in, I think, yeah, I go, went back in with a little bit of white and kind of highlighted a lot of that texture that I had lost just in general all over the whole stenciled piece. Even a little bit on the Stabilo, just being careful uh, not to drag it around to other areas. And then, um, yeah, on those stamped, those smaller stamped buds. And and you can see in the close-up shots just how much texture this piece has and really makes my heart happy. I don't even know what I'm going to do with this piece now that it's done. Um, but I have it and it's fun. Maybe it'll just be a piece in my gallery wall. Thanks so much for joining me. Subscribe to the Artist Gang blog. Subscribe to Donna or to the Artist Gang YouTube. Subscribe to the Donna Downey YouTube and find me also Dee Dee Catron D-E-E-D-E-E-C-A-T-R-O-N and subscribe to my YouTube channel too. Thanks so much.